you released yesterday, but if, if you didn't mind, I just want to ask you maybe for your your first or your your fondest memories of George McGinnis. I, I know you kind of grew up in Indianapolis. Obviously, he was a successful high school player there and, and also at Indiana. Just maybe the things that stick with you most about whether it was watching him in high school and college, getting to know him as, as two former Hoosiers, whatever it might have been. Well, I've known him almost 50 years, and he impacted my life from a young man growing up in Indianapolis as a basketball player. Gave me an opportunity to play at an early age against him when he was a pacer in the ABA days. And um, it, it, it's, it was just special for me. And I mean, we've stayed in contact all these years. I played against him once I was fortunate enough to play in the NBA and uh, his friendship has held true all those years, and um, it's a tremendous loss. I mean, anytime you miss, you know, you lose somebody like that. I mean, he was bigger than life, man. I mean, just a beautiful person. And to get all the accolades, hell, he was a better person than all the accolades that he received over the years. I mean, he was just special. So he's going to be missed. Alex and the Mike Niz. Coach, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. I know you were disappointed with the result last Saturday, but now that you've had some time, I guess this week to work with your team, what, what, what's been the response from them from the, the loss on Saturday, and and what have you tried to focus on as you lead into another tough game on Saturday against Kansas? When you experience a game like that, only thing you can do is come back and go to work. You practice to try to get better and. Only time will tell. I don't know, you know, where we are until we tip it up tomorrow at 12, 30, and we'll see where we are. I mean, we just, we come back to practice and we work, we work. That's the only way you're going to get better. So hopefully our work this week will pay off and we'll see where we are. Mike and then Rabbi. Yeah, Mike, any update on uh, Xavier Johnson's status for Saturday, Saturday's game? And how have you kind of tried to, um, you know, he, he had a tough year last year with the injury. How has he kind of navigated this this stretch and kind of missing these games? Well, it's been tough for him. I mean, you go back to back years where, you know, you're not playing basketball. I mean, you know, we went into this season expecting him to be on the floor and he's he's not there. So, um I know it's tough on him. It's tough on us, uh, but we got to keep we got to keep marching along based on who we got in in uniform until he gets back. And when that is, I I I can't. I don't know yet. I just don't. Rabbi, then Todd. Yeah. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for your time. Uh, I was talking to a couple of NBA scouts recently, and they liked what you've done with where how you've gotten him going. Um, what are some key things that you feel you've done to get him playing the way he is? And what do you think about the way he actually is playing? He's playing fantastic. And the difference is he's playing hard. He's learning how to play harder. And that cures a lot of problems. Uh, he's a talented young big man and um, a lot of room for growth. He's just got to keep working to play harder, and to get better. Todd the Mason. Hey, Mike, uh, you mentioned on your radio show this week that you wanted to see um, defensive improvement, especially coming off the game against Auburn. What goes into the work of that when you have a week to work on it? Uh, what have you tried to instill in the players this week to uh, improve defensively against a very good offensive team in Kansas? Play harder. Fight. That's the name of the game. I thought we came out and established ourselves in the last game, but to give up 104 points is unacceptable. That's something that hadn't happened since I've been here. Uh, you know, the Syracuse game was a couple of overtime games to get the point kind of production kind of out, out of out of our character. You know, we we normally fight and try to hold teams in the 60s and to give up 100 points you're not going to beat anybody in college basketball doing that so we had to come back and go to work you know and emphasize defense along with offense and now we got to see where it leads us Mason and Jack 
coach kind of going off that in dealing with the response from a, from a result like like that game in talking with Gabe Cups afterwards he mentioned that there was kind of a good balance between not letting that taste go out of his mouth and, and kind of remembering that result but also using his motivation going forward have you seen more intent and more emphasis on those things that you've that you wanted to get across in practice this week have you seen a response to that we we've had a decent week of work always room for improvement gentlemen so only time will tell. Jack and Mike Schumann. Hey, Mike. Um, just what stands out to you about uh, Hunter Dickinson's game? Obviously, you played him the last couple of years when he was at Michigan. But um, I guess anything different you've seen, or what? What do you remember kind of about preparing for him the last few years? Well, he's a, a big man that's that's very solid. Can score down low. Can shoot the three. Cause a threat for a lot of the big guys that have to. Go out, go go against him, and you know we played him in Michigan. I think four times, and you know he had the one big explosion here, uh, the first time we played him. But but I thought we played him pretty well from that point on. Uh, but he's having another great season. You know he's one of their top leading scores, and I think he's their leading rebounder. So I mean, he's a handful. It's somebody we're going to have to deal with tomorrow. Mike and Zion. Yeah, good morning, Coach. Um, you, you've had some success in these high-profile home games here over the last couple of years, whether it's Purdue or North Carolina or others. I'm just curious if you do anything different with your team to just kind of keep them loose and, and not let the buildup get to them. We just work. That's all we do. We, you practice to get better. And you, you emphasize you can't lose at home. That's what's important. If you're talking about winning the Big Ten title, you got to win it your games at home and figure it out on the road. And when teams come in here, you know, this is our home court, you know, so we got to try to hold, hold court tomorrow against a, a great coach team, a great talented team. Zan and Jim. Hey Mike, just following up on Hunter Dickinson, how much can you use as far as the way you prep for him at Michigan versus at Kansas, you know, different schemes and different supporting cast? How, how can you, Prepare for him the same way or does that have to switch? Well, he's not changed as a player. So you you, you got to prepare for him the same way. He can make threes and he's great on the low block. So, I mean, nothing's, nothing's changed. I mean, he's taken his act to, to Kansas and he's, he's having a stellar season so far. Jim and Seth. Mike, uh, you just mentioned the threes that uh, Hunter is able to to knock down. But as the team, Kansas is averaging, I think, eight made three-pointers a game in scouting and preparing for them. Are you guys doing anything different uh, to try to prevent the, the three ball shot from being a difference in the, in this game? And are, are you doing anything to try to either encourage or work more three-point shots into your own offense? Guys? I'm going to say this to you for the last time. We take enough threes. We just got to make what we take. And we work defensively to defend the three. And we've had some struggles in that area. Hopefully tomorrow we will fix that. Hopefully. That's all you can do. You can't, you know, I don't predict games or anything like that. You got to go into the game and you got to put up a 40-minute ball game to beat a great team. Seth, last one. Mike, you talked about uh, Xavier's status before, and obviously, you know, you talked earlier in the week about Ja'Kai and his status. Just with the uh, guard depth a little thinner with all of that, how do you feel like the rest of the guys, especially Gabe, have kind of adapted to, you know, needing that needing to be in a little bit more of an elevated role? Well, again, I mean, you're dealing with young Gabe as a freshman, still trying to figure it out, and he gives us all he can give us. I mean, I'm – very pleased with the way he's played for us, but we got to get other guys stepping up and playing. I mean, it's just that simple. And when you do that, you put yourself in position to win basketball games. All right. Thanks, Coach.